online. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us. Just looking at the chat and I can see we've got people from all over the world. Um, just to double check, um, Ryder and JC, can everyone hear me okay? Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, so let's get started. Hi, I'm Raksha and I look after all of the video content for Bullet Journal. So I'll be running all of the back end stuff, the technical, the fun technical stuff um, behind this live stream. Um, so be sure to leave any questions in the chat and I'll do my best to respond. Um, and we'll post a replay of the event um, after, we've, after we've finished. Um, just to let you know, I, we can't um, actually scrap that. I was gonna say we don't have closed captions, but we actually do, which I can see on my screen. So. Looks like that's working, yay. So um, now I'm gonna hand over to JC to introduce the event. Hi everybody, my name is Jessica and you might know me as a pretty prints and paper. Uh, I've been bullet journaling since 2015 and uh, have been working for bullet journal for about two years now. And I do education and community. So that means that I uh, facilitate a lot of the stuff that happens on our membership site, Bujo U. If you're looking for an ad free space to talk about the finer workings of Bullet Journal, you can join us over there um, at Bujo U. And every month we do these events called Plan With Us and Ryder talks through the setting up of our Bullet Journal for the next month. And we go through that reflection process and we uh, talk about that kind of uh, deeper method that comes with the Bullet Journal. A lot of times people are thinking about setting up their 2023 for um, their notebooks or they're maybe you're curious about bullet journal for the first time and you're wondering, oh my gosh, is it really as scary as it is uh, on Instagram? And so we're gonna break this down for you and go through the steps. Whether you've been a bullet journalist this year or not, we are here to talk through a process that will be good for you no matter what your planning process is. And then you can get a taste of what it looks like to set up your notebook for uh, 2023. So. Again, if you have any questions, put them in the chat and we'll be here for you. And otherwise, uh, Ryder's gonna walk through kind of what the bullet journal method can really do for you when you reflect deeply about your life. Hello everyone. I'm Ryder, creator of the bullet journal. Thank you for taking the time. That's really why we are here today, to take the time. Take the time for what? We're gonna take the time to think about what comes next. I know that a lot of things that I talk about um, are hard to visualize, so I put together a deck that will hopefully help you kind of understand what I'm talking about better. So I'm gonna bring that up now. Okay. So let's start with where we are, where you are. We are here. We are here today. We are together to take the time to think about what? To take the time to think about what comes next, right? 
where you want to be. Now, where we want to be can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people, right? And it's the space in between that often can generate a lot of questions. Between where you are and where you want to be, there is a journey, right? And this journey can also be referred to as the reality gap. Where you are now is the reality. This is what is. Where you want to be is a fantasy. That's what comes next. And the gap between the reality and the fantasy can be a source of a lot of suffering for a variety of different reasons that I want to talk about now. And I'm going to address these reasons because I think it's going to be helpful to understand that there are answers to a lot of these questions. Okay, the first is the what in the reality gap. Oftentimes when you focus on what you want, then you start thinking about what you have and what you have is not enough. And we can spend a lot of our time with a lot of these big epic fantasies about what we wanna have in our life, where we wanna be, where we should be, right? And a lot of that can start to make our own lives feel very small and we feel trapped in our own life. And that's something we really want to avoid as much as possible. The next is the where. Sometimes where you wanna be is really not obvious. It is unclear. Where do you want to go? Where do you want to be? Where do you need to be? For a lot of us, this time of year where we're getting prepared for the new year can be really anxiety inducing because we really don't know where we want to be. The next question is how? If we do have an idea of where we want to be, then the next set of questions comes up. How will you get there? How long will it take? How hard will it be? Again, it's a lot of anxiety coming up here. Then last but not least is the why. Why do you want to be there? Right? What makes you so sure that this is the thing? Why are you not there already? Which brings up another thing that happens a lot. A lot of times our goals for the next year are the same ones we had last year, right? So what happened between this year <laughs> and, and the year ahead that, that that's going to change, right? Why are you not there already? What didn't work? And then last but not least, like, why are you certain that this is what you want? Oftentimes, a lot of our goals and our ambitions are not our own at all. They are the goals and ambitions of other people, people telling us what will make us happy, what might make us happy, what should make us happy. A lot of our goals that we set are based on what we should be doing, not on what we actually want to be doing, right? And when we're very certain about what we want to be doing and we do these things and we don't feel that way, it can be really confusing. So we have a lot of these questions moving in to the new year, to, to, to a lot of questions that fill up this reality gap that keep pushing away the fantasy from the reality of what is. So how do we answer a lot of these questions? Well, there's a space for that, right? Where you've been, there is an entire, your entire lifetime is there to help you draw answers for a lot of these really important, confusing, and huge existential questions, right? Because where you've been teaches you what has mattered, where you've looked for the things that have mattered to you, how you tried to accomplish the things that mattered to you, and why they mattered to you at all, right? This is the past that, that will shape the future. And oftentimes when we begin right here where we are and just try to start guessing, it can be really overwhelming and can lead us into a lot of places that don't really align with our lived experience. So what I found to be incredibly useful in my own life is to create a record 
of my lived experience that can help me make more informed decisions about my life moving forward, answering a lot of questions that we do have. Now, where do you find this record of your experience? On the most basic level is your memory. Your memory is a record of your lived experience, but as we know, <laughs> our memories aren't good. As a matter of fact, a lot of our memories are imagination, and it's also just not really robust. So there are a lot of things that you've experienced that you forgot and that you can't really draw from in order to make informed decisions moving forward. But then you also have your photos, which are helpful. You have your calendar, you have social media, so even if you don't bullet journal or write things down, you have all these different artifacts of your life that you can draw from at this time. And what I invite you to do at this time is to think about what you could actually look at for your record to help you learn from that, to study that. For today, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at our notebook, specifically our bullet journal through a ritual that I call the chapter ritual. It's very similar to a general annual reflection or an annual review, whatever you want to say. I like to call it a chapter ritual. And the reason why I call it a chapter ritual is because I see every bullet journal as a chapter in our life. And we use the past chapter in our life to help us answer a lot of these questions when we're trying to figure out where we want to be, what we want to do next. And it also helps us really map out the steps along the way. Again, you don't need a bullet journal to think about things this way, but hopefully you'll see how a bullet journal can be helpful in this process, how a practice, a Bujo practice specifically, can help us to always be very intentional about where we want to be and how we're going to get there. So the chapter ritual is roughly broken down into three different phases, the reflect phase, the refine phase and the respond phase. And I'm going to walk us through each. Okay. So the way I'm going to do this is Okay, make it a little bit more personal here. Let's start with reflect. Okay, inside of our bullet journal, we set intentions, we create monthly logs, monthly reflections, weekly logs, and collections. Now, for those of you who don't bullet journal, a lot of these terms may be unfamiliar, so I will try to touch upon it briefly. But if you are interested in learning anything more about this, please go to bulletjournal.com, where we have a lot of free resources, as well as a course that we released this year that dives into every one of these things in the greatest detail I could possibly put into it. It's a really wonderful resource to learn how to bullet journal officially. So every notebook begins with an intention. And that's what I want to take a little bit of a time for here right now. What is an intention? There are many definitions for it, but I would like to share mine. An intention is a commitment to a process, right? Whatever that process is, is up to you. I want to become more productive. I want to become more mindful. I want to become a better parent. I want to become healthier. Your intention is that, right? It's open-ended, but it sends you in a direction. And I think it would make sense right now just to think about what your intention is for being here today, for taking the time to be here with me. Just, just a moment. Maybe we can add some to the chat. What is your intention for today? Is it to learn a little bit about bullet journaling, to prepare for the year ahead? What is it? Maybe share some words. Intention is a very practical way to help us focus and figure out why we're doing what we're doing. And this is why it's one of the first things that we do every time we set up a new notebook. By the end of a notebook, You'll have done all these things. You have taken all these different actions 
that you've been recording this entire time. So during the reflection part, what we're doing is we're actually looking at the record that we've created. And that begins with the intention, right? The intention page in the notebook can be one intention. It can be a progression of intentions as things changed, as your circumstances changed. And then starting there is really helpful because it kind of begins to remind you of why you were doing this practice in general. And then you go to your monthly logs and your monthly logs consists of your timeline, which is all the things that you've experienced and all your monthly tasks, all the things you've done. So your actions and your experiences. Again, it's really helpful to just think about it in this process. Then next we have our monthly written reflection, which is essentially long form journaling about the month gone by. We're just trying to process it. Then we have our weekly logs, which you guessed it is there to help us organize and process our weeks. And then we have our custom collections. And those custom collections can be anything from a fertility tracker to a project monitor to a collection of different ideas you have about an essay you want to write or a book you want to write. These are just places dedicated to specific related topic, uh, topics inside of your bullet journal notebook. And what we're going to do during reflection is simply take a look through them. We're taking a moment to walk down memory lane and read through the last chapter of our life. What do we do then? Well, it can be a lot of content. There's a lot of different things that you're writing down throughout the year. Some of us might only use two notebooks a year. I use about four a year. So that's you know a couple hundred pages worth of material that you're skimming through. And I don't know about you, that that seems really overwhelming to me. And I wanna keep that really simple, right? I wanna keep that process really simple. So what I do is I go through this process of reflection and then I create cliff notes for myself. Every couple pages, something will hop out of me. I'm like, oh, right, that was really important. Or, oh, that person was really amazing. Or that experience was really important to me. Or a really hard lesson that I won. Or here's a strategy that was really successful. Rather than writing about it long form, what I like to do is to create cliff notes. And I do this by creating a chapter log at the end of my notebook. The chapter log is super basic to set up. As you'll note, a lot of my own templates for my notebook are black and white, really simple. You don't need to be an artist. You don't need a lot of time, just very utilitarian. And the way I like to do this is on the top left, I write down the date of the lifetime of that notebook. And then I divide it up into four different cells. The left side, you can see dedicated to process and the right side is dedicated to purpose. So I like to divide my page up into working, not working, more of, less of. So working and not working is more process. And this is more mechanical, if you will. What strategies did you try? What approaches did you try? Maybe it's diets, maybe it's courses, maybe it's therapies, whatever it is, these are very strategic things. So let's take a moment to gear you're in a little bit more here and have some lived examples. I used to track a lot of my habits, for example, and the way that I was tracking my habits worked, right? I, I reduced things last year to very minimal amount of habits that we're tracking. So my habit tracker is something that worked, right? On the other hand, setting Six day work weeks, which was something I was trying out, you know, just like working less, but, you know, half days, but uh, working six days, that's something that didn't work for me. That, that's something I tried out. I love running experiments. I mean, that's really what the Bujo practice is for, is trying to run these experiments to help us more align our actions with our values. And some of these things work and some of them don't. The way I planned this vacation was a total mess. That didn't work at all. Okay. And I want to remember that. So for me, figuring out what didn't work isn't a sign of failure. It's feedback, it's information. And I need this feedback in order to develop a new approach or to know what I've tried and walked away from. So this is what these cliff notes are really 
helping me to do. Again, this is an aggregate from the rest of my entire notebook. And then on the right-hand side, you have the more of and the less of. And these are things that aren't necessarily super technical. These are more intuitive and emotional, if you will. So for example, one thing that I started focusing on a lot is using more resourceful language. I really believe that language is one of the most powerful technologies that we possess and that it can completely change our mind, right? You hear things all the time that change the way that you think about something and you can achieve the same thing with the words that you use. So for me, using more resourceful language, language that is hopeful, language that is curious, not judgmental, is hard, but has really helped me change the way that I approach things and talk about things. That's really helpful. And then obviously social media is something that I should be doing less of all the time. I happen to be an Instagram addict. I just can't get enough of funny, silly memes and sending them to my friends. Guilty pleasure. But being on an Instagram makes me feel worse, right? So just less of it. I don't have to cut it out completely, just trying to figure out a relationship to it that is more sustainable and more helpful. And I have a whole bunch of strategies and stuff I can talk about at another time. Let's see what else. Other one is that, you know, I, I teach for a living. And when I have people in my life that are going through something, sometimes I default to teaching, right? And that's something that I'm trying to do less of. And when I'm in teaching mode, often I'm listening for something in order to process this and provide some kind of help and some kind of information. And that's fine when people come to my YouTube channel or they like asking me specifically for advice. But a lot of time in my personal life, it's just about listening, right? And just listening um, to hear them. And I'm not listening to speak. So less of that, right? And again, this is not a judgment on myself. It's, I'm becoming curious about something that didn't work. Then here are the cliff notes. Here are all these things that I took away from the last, depending on how long you use the notebook for. For me, it's usually three months. I use one a quarter. Okay, so what do we do with all this stuff? Well, we put them into what I like to call a chapter reflection. What is a chapter reflection? A chapter reflection is essentially a long form journal entry that helps you process all of these different things that you've written in your chapter log. You have the cliff notes, the chapter log is there to help you bring things top of mind, to remember things that you may have forgotten. Now with the chapter log, you have a very different context and view of the last chapter of your life. And now you're going to write a summary of that chapter of your life. And you can go about it any way you like. The way that I like to frame the chapter reflection is, what did I learn? What did I learn in this last chapter of my life? And I take as much time as I need to here. And again, if you don't have a bullet journal or you just journal in a different way, I think just taking the time to write about the year gone by, the quarter gone by, is an, such a simple thing to do, technically, right? Figuring out what to write can be difficult, but just think about what you learned. What happened in the last year, over the entire year, or the last quarter, or the lifespan of your notebook. Just taking the time to process it. And I like starting with a question, what did I learn? And then you write as long as you want. And if you can't figure out what to write about, look at your chapter log. Again, you can create a chapter log even if you don't bullet journal. Just think about stuff and quickly jot things down. What came up? What did you experience? Go through your phone, look through your photos, look at your calendar, create that chapter log. What worked, what didn't, what do you want more of? What do you want less of? Have that to help you kind of get a bigger picture of everything. And then you can write at length about it next, really kind of, process it and synthesize it because you're going to need this for the next step, which is refinement. Okay. Now we've taken a good look at our life. We've seen the things that work, the things that haven't. Now we're going to take a second pass. And it's, this is the pass where we're going to try to 
take away the things that didn't work and focus on the things that did. And for me, that process begins with um, the index. So for those of you who bullet journal, the index usually serves as a way for you to quickly find what you wrote down inside your notebook. That is one of its strongest features, but for those of you who are not so sure why the index matters, this might be the thing that, that makes it a lot more clear. So whereas the index helps us find the content during the life of the notebook, at the end of the life of this notebook, it shows us very clearly in black and white where we have invested our time and our energy. This is a list of the things that you spent your life doing. And towards the end of your notebook, this is a great place to have a great bird's eye view of how you lived. So when I am thinking about where I want to be, I start with this, where I have been. And the way I go about this is I actually turn my index into a list of tasks. So inside Bujo, in the bullet journal method, we use a dot bullet to represent a task. And what I'm going to go through now is see what tasks I'm done with, right? What areas of my life I am complete with now. So using this dot bullet can help me quickly go through my index and help me check off all the things that I am complete with. These are things that I don't need to invest any more time into. Maybe your projects are completed or the tracker is done. Things have changed undoubtedly from the time where you wrote something down to the moment, to this moment now, or to the moment of your own reflection. And this is a great way for you to see what still remains active, what still remains important, what still remains exciting to you. So I go through here and cross everything off that I'm complete with, which inevitably leaves a couple items that are still open. Like my short story ideas, those are things that I don't want to, I'm not done with that. I haven't written those short stories yet. Or the reading list, there are a bunch of books on there that I still want to read. So that's not done yet. Therapy notes, you know, chances are you're going to continue doing therapy. So you want to continue having a thread. What is your progress here? Or maybe you're remodeling a house and you have a whole bunch of notes here. So these are the projects that are still active, things that are still relevant in your life. And this is a quick way to quickly highlight and surface them so you're not so overwhelmed. Okay, the next step is to look at our future log. Now that we've prepared the things, now that we've surfaced the things that we're gonna move over into the next notebook, let's go to the next part of that, which is the future log. Whether you use a future log or a someday in the future log, these are things that you've written down that are outside your current notebook, right? So in the future log, maybe you wrote down things that are gonna be happening in the next year. Now is a great time to slow down and to think about the things that you've written down there, right? What is still relevant? What are you going to allow into the next season of your life? That's really the choice that you're making now. Is this still important given your current circumstances? Are these things that still excite you? Are these things that are still meaningful to you? If they are, great. Then that's something you can transfer into your next future log. If not, this is the time to let go. Next are the collections. So within the bullet journal method, people create collections. Collections are basically folders, if you will, for related information. This could be health notes, this could be therapy, this could be class notes, whatever the collections are. And collections can, can range anywhere from a simple to-do list to um, large project files to whatever, right? Some of them are very elaborate. Some of them are very minimal. They have a certain function. Sometimes we can spend a lot of time just creating these collections. And what happens is when we spend a lot of time doing something, we automatically assign it value, even if it no longer is valuable. So as we're trying to refine our practice, we really want to look at all the collections that we created or the collections that we want to transfer. Take a good, strong look at them. 
So the way that I like to think about it is through this process. You have this custom collection. Maybe you're tracking your fitness goals, right? And the first question you're gonna ask yourself, is it helping? Is it helping you now, right? And if the answer is yes, then great. Like, how is it helping? Again, you're trying to approach this from a point of curiosity. How's it, how's it, well, it, how is it helping you in this case? Maybe it's helping you because it's motivating you. It's helping you stay on point and accurate with your progress. Can it improve? Yes or no? If you can't think of a way that it can improve, great. Then it's ready to be moved on. If you can think of a way, then this is a great time to iterate. That's a beautiful thing about bullet journal. It's like you are designing tools based on your needs, based on the way that you think, the way that you operate. And that changes as you get better, as you grow. So this is a great time for you to improve that tool. That's what's so fun about this methodology. Not only do you get to create solutions for your own problems, you get to improve upon them constantly. So they keep on getting better. We're not just trying to improve what we're focusing on, but how we're focusing on it, how we're operating towards the things that we want. Now you have custom collections and you, you ask, is it helping? And sometimes you find the answer is no, it's not helping. Sitting down and spending hours getting my month ready is not helping. Honestly, it may be fun, but it's actually, it may have been fun, but it's not sustainable, right? And again, here, you don't want to approach this from a sense of failure. It's like, oh, this didn't work. You really want to approach this from a point of curiosity instead of judgment. That's the frame of mind you want to enter this with. So if something is not working, we don't want to just throw it out wholesale. We want to ask ourselves, why is this not working? What, what about it isn't working for me? Is it too complicated? Is it taking too much time? Am I tracking the wrong thing? Am I focusing on the wrong thing? Is it the wrong goal, right? This is, this is something I've brought up before. Why does this thing matter to you? And sometimes the answer is it doesn't. It matters to your parents. It matters to your boss. It matters to your spouse, but it might not matter to you. So this thing that you're tracking, this thing that you're working towards is just not important to you. Okay, so whatever it is, is there a way to improve? Once you approach something with curiosity, is there a way that you can improve upon it, right? If the answer is no, then this is something you can leave behind, right? You don't have to deal with this thing anymore. If there's something you can improve, this is a great time to iterate, right? It's like you figure out why something wasn't working and then you fix it, you improve it. At the very least, you try something different. And remember earlier I had talked about like why do you still have this goal, right? Why is this still a goal that you haven't attained? This happens often. We set a goal. It's like, oh, I want to lose 10 pounds last year. And now I want to lose 10 pounds this year. What happened in between? It's chances are it's because the way you were approaching that problem wasn't working. And this is a good time to take a strong look at this. Like you created a collection to lose that weight and whatever you were doing wasn't working. And just by having a record, you can actually start to see that it's like, okay, this approach doesn't work. And given that this approach didn't work, what can I now change to make it more effective, right? So maybe it's not going to the gym a hundred times, you know, it's, it's about eating better or getting nutritionist involved, something different than what you tried last year. So once you think about a new solution to this problem, then you have, then you're ready to move something forward. Okay. And then with refinement, the last part is to look at your chapter log and look at your chapter reflection. We just did this, but now you have an overview of the things that worked and the things that you want more of. And you also have this chapter reflection, which will have undoubtedly surfaced things that are important to you. Right? That's a beautiful thing about long form journaling. It can bring things to the surface that may have been hidden within a line or a short entry. Just taking the time to really think about the things that you want more of in your life. Like when you think about what you want more of in your life and you look at it compared to your record, chances are you will find something. Okay, so with all this information, we've reflected we refined, we move on to the next phase. 
which is to respond. Now, how do we respond to all this? Well, we set up the next chapter of our life, starting with our intention. Given everything that we just went through, chances are you will probably have identified something that is really important to you based on your lived experience, as opposed to simply guessing where you should be by studying your life, chances are you're going to very quickly connect with something that is. It is the reality of something and you can set an intention accordingly. Oftentimes the problem with goal setting and thinking about where we should be is that we're taking a huge guess as to what we want. Right? It's a huge guess. The thing is that we know from our lived experience what we don't want. By looking back at our life, we can see what challenges we are actually facing, what things we are overcoming. And I think that it's much more helpful to think about those things, to solve real problems, to accomplish goals based on our lived experience than simply try to invent some goal on the spot. So we start with setting our intentions. So there's a very specific way to break in a new notebook. That's something you can see on our YouTube channel. So be sure to subscribe to this. Um, but setting up your, the next chapter of your life begins by breaking your notebook and then by setting your intention. And again, this intention isn't a vow. You don't have to, you don't have to overthink it because it's something that will change. Right? As you work towards your intention, as you work towards your goal, you're going to learn things. Things are going to change and you're going to realize things. And you're like, okay, actually, I got to change my intention based on what I learned. And the, having that intention page is there because you can keep coming back to it. Okay, this was my old intention. Why did this not work? What do I want to change about it? Set a new intention. And then you migrate that intention or writing a new one as the first part of the next chapter which I find so helpful. And this is why I like setting up a new notebook at the beginning of every year, because it's a, it's a new intention for the year ahead. That's it. It's like, what do I want more of in my life? What worked? What are, what are the things I want to move towards based on my lived experience, based on what I know? Next is the future log. So now that you've crossed things out in your future log, chances are there's still things in there. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to move the remaining pieces into your next future log or someday in the future log. Then the next thing you're gonna do is set up your monthly goals. So there's a, probably a bunch of stuff in your last notebook that you didn't get around to. And chances are now through this reflection, you've gotten rid of most of those things, but some things still remain. So the first month of the new year, so we're probably gonna say January, January, you're going to figure out what are you going to get done in January based on your intentions, based on what you learned in your last chapter of your notebook. What are the things you're going to get done this month? What can you realistically get done in January? And the things that you can't get done in January are things that go into your new future log. So you're starting to create the architecture for the next chapter of your life. And then last but not least, you're going to migrate any collections over that are still relevant. Anything that you still want to do. Now I want to slow down here just a little bit because this is the point where a lot of people like start getting a little bit nervous. Like, but Ryder, <laughs> I have really dense collections. It's an incredible amount of data. I have a reading list of like 50 books, 60 books that I want to read. Like, do I really have to rewrite everything into my new notebook? This could take me days to do, and I get that, I do. And the answer is you absolutely should not copy everything over from collections that are still valuable and useful. As with everything in this process, we only wanna migrate the things that remain relevant, right? So in your reading list, let's say you have a list of 10 books that you wanted to read, but that list kind of started growing over the last six months. Now you're going to take a moment and you're going to check these books. And chances are you're going to probably want to read maybe half that list, maybe even less. Like realistically, you wrote down some stuff, but now knowing what time you have, knowing more about yourself, it's like, no, these are three books that actually really excite me. That's what you want to transfer. 
or if you're on some kind of fitness journey, you don't need to record or to migrate everything that you've written down the entire year. You're just going to migrate the information that you need to move on. You keep the structure of your custom collection, the template, or maybe you improve upon it. And then you add maybe the last two workouts that you did so you can see some progress. It's really up to you, but taking a moment to think about what you're actually going to rewrite is really exciting. It's an opportunity for you to choose what you want more of in your life, to figure out what you want to focus on. And I feel this is such a great opportunity. This is also a wonderful opportunity to, for you to think about what is in your control. Like you may be thinking, it's like, hey, you know, I, I, I don't have time to do any of this stuff. I don't have time for these things. Like, okay. So if you don't have time for any of this stuff, maybe you figure out what you want to change in your life and what is in your control. Right? I don't have enough time. Okay. But Time, to a certain extent, is something that's in our control. We can say yes or no to engagements. We can say yes or no to going on this trip or this dinner. We can say yes or no to helping people out. Like These are choices that we have to make. So trying to figure out what is in our control can help us quickly reduce the amount of things that we write down or that we focus on. So this is how we respond. We study our lived experience and then we surface the things that we want more of and try to and if we figure out what we want less of now is the time to take action as well remember now we're not guessing about where we should be we're thinking about like oh this is an actual problem in my life i look through my notebook and this relationship is not working for me so either I'm going to fix this relationship or I'm going to leave. Those are the options. How does that look like? What are the next steps there? This job that I randomly took is actually way more interesting than I thought, but how am I going to improve, right? It's like, okay, well, maybe I need more, more education. What are the next steps here? That's the thing. Like now you have an opportunity to really think about how to solve problems or how to superpower your ambitions right now. In other words, in this process, we have figured out the why, the what, the when, and the how. Why you're working on what you're working on based on your previous experience, not based on external influences, but based on what you've really felt right? This was good. This was not. This gave me energy. This didn't. What did I work on? You have a whole index of that. Here, here's where we always keep hearing people say, where did all the time go? This is a great time to actually look at where your time went, what you want to focus on, when you're going to do it, right? You have a future log, you have their monthly logs, you break down your big ambitions into smaller, more manageable projects and how you're going to go about it. But well, you know how you're going to go about it because you've done things before. Some of those things haven't worked and you've figured out why they don't work. And now you have a new opportunity to try something new. So you don't keep doing the same thing over and over again and expecting new results. Okay, we've talked about a lot, so I'm going to summarize this pretty quickly. What you just witnessed is the chapter ritual inside the bull journal method right? Bullet journal is not a notebook. <laughs> Bullet journal or Bujo is a methodology that happens to use a notebook because it helps us create a space for us to have uninterrupted time to think. The chapter ritual is the ritual by which we go from one notebook, we transition from one chapter of our lives to the next. And we have a physical artifact here, which is a notebook. So the first step was to reflect. We reviewed our intention we summarized our experience and we surfaced what was most alive for us based on our lived experience. Then we refined that content. We located what worked, filtered out what didn't and defined what matters. Then we responded. We structured the next chapter of our life around what matters to us, supported by the tools 
that we know to work based on our lived experiences. So in other words, hopefully you can see how this process can really help you figure out how to get from where you are, where you want to be. Now, we only touched the surface of a lot of this. Let me get a little bit more personal here. So I know this was a lot and it might seem really complicated. And what's really important for me is that I just want to introduce you to this process because it has a lot of different tools, as you can see. And I think the reason I wanted you to set an intention is because I wanted you to frame this experience with your own needs. And maybe you see a tool here or you see a tool there or an approach or strategy that works for you. And that's really what bullet journaling is about. It's about figuring out what you want, why you want it and how to get there. And hopefully this process will have shown you what is possible. Again, you don't need to use everything. Even if you use one thing, if you took away one thing from this, that's all that matters. Don't feel like you're doing something wrong. Bujo looks different for every single practitioner. What I'm showing you here has worked for me. And if you want to learn more about this, I highly encourage you to take the course or to join our membership site, Bujo U, where we talk about this kind of stuff all the time. It's a social network that's dedicated to intentional living and where we all try to help each other out and figure this out. And I get to learn a lot from you as well. Speaking of which, I know we're coming close to the end, so I want to make sure to take some time for your questions. You're muted. There we go. We have lots of good questions in the chat. Um, so I will display them on screen. I'll just put Ryder back on to answer. Okay. The first question we have is, how do you not get lost in reflection? When do you stop? <laughs> <laughs> and there was agreement in the chat that it can be a bit of um, a bit overwhelming and difficult to dig deep and not get lost. Sure, a couple of ways. One is if you happen to be somebody who has a lot of ruminating thoughts and get a little bit too deep, then create a time box for it. I think that that's really helpful, especially if you're going through a really challenging part of your life or you're going through a very challenging episode. Sometimes reflection can get negative. Sometimes it can get a little bit too emotional. So a couple of things, just time box it and keep it light. Right? Maybe light some incense, listen to some music while you're doing it, do it in a place that's full of sunlight, something like that. But if you know that you're prone to kind of going a little bit too deep, limit it. That's it, right? Um, I think that that's helpful. It also helps to fully embrace who you are, to who I might overthink this stuff. And oftentimes I find that if I find myself ruminating too much about one thing, I, it's often me trying to avoid thinking about something else. So it's like most things in Bujo, like what are the top three things that I really want to get done in this reflection? And one is like, well, I really want to sur surface what my most important like career priority is. What is my most important personal priority? And I'm going to do this one on Saturday when I wake up before the kids get up. And I'm going to do this one on Sunday after I put them to bed. So you can just be more strategic and tactical about it. Or you just give yourself like the morning. I personally like doing a lot of this stuff in the morning. It's like, okay, when I get up and I granted, I don't have kids, but I'm going to wake up and until 11 or 12, I'm just going to take this time to reflect. And in order to get through a lot of this stuff, um, that, time box keeps me accountable. The next question is, I often find it difficult to decide, to decide on what to put in the future log from collections and intentions. Is there a process to make it easier to decide on things? Well, if you're talking about the next future log, I think this is a very technical thing. This is basically an action that you need to take in a time frame that's beyond the current month. So if you're getting set up for January and there's something that you have to do in March, then that goes in the future log. That's pretty much it. I think that that's where 
just start with that and then don't worry about the other things until it becomes a problem. So let's say you have a project and you have a bunch of things that you need to do for that project. As you're transferring them, maybe transfer a lot of those things into the future log or remind yourself, which is another thing, you can stack things, which is like in March, you're like, I have six things to do for this project. So when you get to March, you will see in your future log, like check this collection. So it acts as a prompt. Or maybe prompt yourself to check a month before. Thank you. How do you narrow down your intentions for the year to a realistic number of intentions to live out through the year? I usually try to break them down by a professional and a personal intention. And I try to keep it to one. What is a process that I'm committing to? As some of you may know, I try to bring things down to an absolute minimum. Like this, this whole idea of priorities. There are no priorities. <laughs> there is a priority. It's the actual word. So for me, there is like a professional priority and a personal priority. That's it. And I start with that. And then each month I check in on my priority and see if that works. If it's working, if I'm getting if I'm moving towards it, I, I've had times where I've set an intention that I very quickly, that very quickly no longer served me, right? An intention is a commitment to a process. And I was committed to a process that eventually didn't align with my circumstances anymore. So the first thing is keep it as, keep your action as small as possible. Keep your actions as focused as possible and then change them. So rather than having a hundred of them, you could have a someday in the future log where you write down things that you want to do. I want to lose 10 pounds. I want to gain a thousand followers. I want to write a short story, whatever. That's fine. But the intention is a commitment to a process. And every month you can check in with the process that you committed to and see whether or not it aligns with your circumstances. But that way it keeps it simple. Focusing on one thing, maybe two. I hope that's helpful. Makes sense. The next question is close to my heart. It's something I battle with too. So I'm going to put that one up. Um, how do you balance being free versus being scheduled and disciplined? I'm drawn to this, but it feels like it doesn't leave much room for free time. Uh, I can see that because I just created like a very rigid slide. But when you actually do a lot of these things, I mean, what we're talking about now is a process that can take anywhere from an hour to a couple of days, depending on how deep you want to go. It's really up to you. That's one process. But while you're bullet journaling, I think the thing that appeals to most people is that it can free up a lot of time. So the way that I see this is that we take a little bit of time up front to make sure that we don't waste a lot of time on things we don't need to do later. Right? We, a lot of this is based on ritual. It's not super rigid, though. It's like every, every day, week, or month, it's up to you. You're kind of checking in with yourself and seeing what you're focusing on. And that helps you curate the things that you allow into your life regularly. And I found that with that little bit of extra time up front, just sitting down and writing down your thoughts, writing down a couple focus points for the day, you end up having a lot more time for the things you care for because you're saying no to things more often. You become aware of what are distractions because you're looking at your life and you're thinking about your intention, right? You have your intention that is guiding your action. And you start to act according to your intention. And that means that you just don't have time for things that no longer align for that. And you say no. It makes it easier to understand what to say no to. And that frees up time. If you're spending all your time planning, then that is not at all the intention here. <laughs> I advocate for you to spend as little time as possible for this to work. And that's really up to you. To be very specific, I spend five to 10 minutes bullet journaling every day. That's it. The only time I take more time is during the weekly ritual and the monthly ritual and now the chapter ritual, which is half an hour, maybe an hour, and then a couple hours. That's it. But during the day, it's 10 to 15 minutes. I think we have time for one more question. Okay. Um, so this one's come up a few times, so I'll put this one on. Um, what do you do with all of your old notebooks? Do you discard them? Only keep what's important? How do you keep them all? <laughs> 
Yeah. So I keep all my old notebooks. Back in the day, in, 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 in an earlier version of Bullet Journal, I actually referred back to a lot of my notebooks. So in the, a previous life, I was a software designer and I would come up with a lot of different solutions. Like there's countless ways to optimize a checkout flow. And oftentimes a client would pick one, which meant I had all this other stuff. And I would go back to those when another client would be like, I need a checkout flow. It's like, okay, I've already done a lot of thinking here. But as my practice has progressed with this chapter ritual, I really only take forward what really continues to add value to my life. So I find myself going back to my older notebooks less and less. That being said, I mean, it's just really cool to have these artifacts of your life. You know, once in a while I get nostalgic. I'm like, oh, this was a really good time in my life. Like, what was I doing differently here? Who was I surrounded by? What was I, how was I thinking? What were the narratives there? That's the beautiful thing about Abujo practice results in this library of your life. And you have all these different chapters to dive into. So the way that I do this on a more practical level is, is my current one is when I'm done with it, I will write down the year and then the time span in which uh, this, when in which I was using this notebook of this chapter, if you will. And then I actually place them spine backwards or spine towards the wall. And that way I don't need any labels or anything. A lot of other people have labels. As a matter of fact, the official notebook comes with a sticker sheet. I think I have mine in here. Yeah. So this is the addition to notebook, which also is now available in blue, by the way, shameless plug, but they come with a sticker sheet and that sticker sheet has labels that you can put on the spine. Okay. Shall I take one more or? I think we can squeeze one more in. There's so many good okay. questions. <laughs> Let's do it. All the pressure. <laughs> well, one thing I also want to say is that a lot of people tuning in, I imagine, have never bullet journaled and don't really, they see this and like, wait, this is way too much stuff. So let me quickly submit one thing for your consideration. If any of this made sense, we're gonna have a replay of this that you can watch later and you can kind of go through the steps. But again, if I had to boil this down to the simplest version of this process is get maybe three or four sheets of paper, right? One you can fold in half and then create the chapter log where you just look back and really quickly take cliff notes. Things that worked, things that didn't, things that I want more of, things that I want less of. And use the artifacts in your life, use your calendars, use your Twitter feed, whatever you want to help you quickly remember. And then just write about it. You don't even need a notebook. You can do it in Notion, if you will, <laughs> whatever, whatever your weapon of choice is, just taking the time, that's all you need. So that's the, the quickest way. And if you want to learn more, you know, we have a lot of resources on this channel and on the website that you can check out. Okay, let's take that question. <clears throat> Okay, the last question. How do you integrate Bujo with the second brain? Uh, huge question for the end. <laughs> yeah, uh, that is going to be a video coming out in the future. I do have a way of integrating both. I have my own version of the second brain. If you don't know what a second brain is, I highly recommend checking out Tiago Forte's work. It makes the whole world of PKM and personal knowledge management really accessible. He's a really smart guy, love his work. Um, so how do you integrate Bujo with PKM is a very big focus for us next year. So stay tuned for that. Okay, okay shall we? wrap it with that let's bring jessica back on here um yeah so first of all thank you for taking the time i hope that this was helpful thank you so much to my team and those who are not on camera as well for making this all work um, to learn more check out bulletjournal.com we have a course that goes into all of this in detail and more uh it's a self-guided course so broken down into really small pieces. So hopefully no matter what your time availability is, it will be manageable. We also have 
Ujo U, which is our membership site. That's community.bulletjournal.com where we talk about this stuff all the time. And we have a lot of live events where I kind of do these events. Jessica and Raksha are, are also leading workshops and live events as well. Team, is there anything that I'm missing? Um, just one thing to add, we've had questions in the chat about how to be more consistent in your bullet journal, how to reflect, and um, I just like to tell everyone to head over to our YouTube channel because we just published videos on these topics, um, so I think they'll be really helpful, um, particularly ways to restart your bullet journal practice, ways to be more consistent, um, reflecting in your bujo, um, check those out. Nice reminder. There's going to be some stuff happening in our Bujo U community. And if you're looking for more events like this, this is what we do in our community. And we talk about different topics. And next month, we're talking about goals. So, you know, maybe stay tuned to your emails and you'll be seeing some information go out about that. But just as always, this is a process that you can take from as it serves you. And Ryder went through a lot of really amazing information that um, you can pull from. And uh, whatever your intention is for the reflection, stay rooted in that. And you can kind of just choose the bits that will help you the most. You don't have to do the whole thing all at once, especially if you're just getting started. That's the only thing I'll say. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jessica. So I'll end with this. Thank you for taking the time. And I will keep on making YouTube videos now with the help of a team, which makes everything possible. I can do it all by myself. I literally couldn't do that myself. So I'll see a lot more of you on YouTube. Please be sure to subscribe to our newsletter to get updates. And if you're so inclined, check out the community and the course. Again, thank you for taking the time. Happy bullet journaling, and I'll see you next time.